Breaking news, two court appearances in the last 12 hours for the man accused of killing Nassau Bay Sergeant Kayla Sullivan. Her alleged killer and his mother both face judges overnight. We begin our team coverage with reporter Courtney Fisher at Nassau Bay. Courtney? Yeah, good morning, guys. We are outside the Nassau Bay Police Department, where for 16 years, Sergeant Kayla Sullivan dedicated her life to this place and the people in Nassau Bay. Take a look outside the department. You have flags at half staff posters saying Nassau Bay loves Sergeant Kayla Sullivan. Flowers and blue ribbons everywhere. It is so clear she was deeply loved and respected. Take a look. Her alleged killer appearing in court overnight. Officers put Sullivan's handcuffs on Tavores Henderson. A powerful statement. She's gone, but not forgotten. Henderson's bond set at $150,000, and that has infuriated a lot of people, including the sheriff. But prosecutors stressing this morning his murder charge will likely be upgraded to capital murder, which means the bond could also increase. Guys, we'll find out about that at court at 9 o'clock this morning. He's reappearing before a judge. I should also mention funeral arrangements, plans underway for Sergeant Sullivan. As soon as we get firm details on that, of course, we'll let you know. For now, reporting from Nassau Bay, Courtney Fisher, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. I'm Jeff Ealing in downtown Houston, where the suspect's mother is also facing criminal charges after authorities say she lied to detectives who were looking for her son. This morning, Tiffany Henderson buried her face in her hands as the court went over the details. Deputies say on the night that Sergeant Kayla Sullivan was allegedly run over by Tavares Henderson, he met with his mother after the incident, and he was allegedly taken to a Houston hotel by his mother. However, Tiffany Henderson would later tell police that she did not know where her son was. This morning, we learned that deputies actually have video surveillance showing Tiffany dropping Tavares off at the hotel and then going home to meet with police. Officials say Tiffany endangered the public by not sharing that information with law enforcement. Tiffany Henderson now facing a third degree felony for hindering an investigation. Her bond set at $50,000. Reporting live, Jeff Ealing, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. Well, police discovered a dead man inside a truck that crashed near a motel on Will Clayton Parkway in Humble. He was found after shots were fired around 930 last night. The victim was hit and then crashed into the lawn outside the Regency Inn near the East X Freeway. The shooter fled the scene and police now still trying to figure out why he was shot. Breaking news from East Houston. A suspected robber has been shot and killed at an apartment complex on Fleming and May. This is video we received this morning into our ABC 13 newsroom. Now, detectives say a man who was being robbed by two other people shot one of them. That suspected robber is dead, and we have been gathering information and waiting for updates from police. We'll update you throughout the day. Also this morning, deputies say one woman shot another after they met each other on Craigslist. They're just not sure if they were selling something to one another. The shooting happened at Cornerstone Village in northwest Harris County. The woman was taken to the hospital but is expected to survive. Whoever shot her left, and deputies have no idea really what led up to that shooting. Well, tonight, a Tejano singer convicted of raping his niece is launching his comeback tour right here in Houston. Joe Lopez was released from prison in 2018. He served 12 years of a 20-year sentence. Now, his parole conditions mandated that he register as a sex offender and have no contact with anyone under 17 years old. He also could not enter Harris County without prior approval. Well, that condition now been, has been modified. So tonight, he's performing at El Rodeo Disco in Southeast Houston. ABC 13 will monitor the concert to see if there are any protests. Lopez canceled an event earlier this year in San Antonio because of threats. Now to politics. Here it is your voice, your vote at home. Tomorrow there's an important runoff election. Among the races, Houston mayor, city council seats, as well as positions on HISD's board of trustees. Now polls open at 7 a.m. and they go all the way until 7 p.m. You can vote at your neighborhood polling locations or at any Harris County voting center. Voters can ride Metro for free, buses and light rail. We have a sample ballot available on ABC13.com. Yeah, unfortunately, voting in those runoffs is really, really light mostly, but the weather shouldn't keep you from getting out there, right? Absolutely.
absolutely not. In fact, if you're a fan of warmer weather, you're going to want to be out and about not only to today, but also this weekend. Some beautiful fall like weather here with temperature readings starting off in the 50s and then warming up into the low 70s. You'll notice a lot of 70s on the map today, low to mid 70s in most areas, upper 60s out toward Livingston and Woodville and closer toward Victoria, pushing close to 80 degrees. I think we'll get a little bit closer to 80 degrees here in Houston on Sunday as those warm southerly winds start to blow in. That will also help temperature readings in the morning jump from the 40s Saturday morning to the upper 50s as we get into Sunday morning. Our next storm system over the Pacific will eventually be pushing into the Rockies over the weekend and then by Monday drawing in some rain across southeast Texas. At times we could be dealing with some brief heavy downpours including a few rumbles of thunder. So expect a more active start to the week as temperatures climb to the mid 70s on Monday, followed by a cold push of air. Those temperatures back down to near freezing by Wednesday and Thursday morning with highs in the 50s and 60s. Catherine. Well, by tra traffic as you go into the weekend, you're going to see some big closures around town, including in the Galleria area. So a total closure of the 610 West Loop northbound and southbound ramp to 59 southbound. So to translate that, if you're on the West Loop trying to get south toward the Sugarland area, that ramp lane connecting those two locations will be blocked off all weekend long. And that could impact your holiday shopping, your holiday plans in the Galleria area. So expect extra traffic in that location. Exit northbound, make a U-turn to head back the opposite way. All right, we're less than two weeks from Christmas and most families, you know, trying to pack in as much holiday fun as you can. Well, here are a few options if you want to celebrate without spending any extra money. Get a major dose of holiday lights in the Heights. Tomorrow night, stroll along while enjoying twinkling white lights and listen to Christmas carols and jazz bands. The Woodlands Heights neighborhood is asking for toy donations. On Sunday, Rice Village is hosting a silent, sensory-friendly Santa experience. Families with children with autism and other special sensitivities can visit Santa in his workshop on Amherst Street. Silent Santa runs 9 a.m. to noon. You will have to pay for photos and you must RSVP. And finally, check out the Christmas Boat Lane Parade in Kima. Head to the boardwalk at 6.30 tomorrow night to watch hundreds of decorated boats. That is one of the best okay. events there. So much going on this weekend, and we hope you have a great weekend. That's the news for now. Thanks for joining us. Enjoy your Friday as well.